Namaste brothers and sisters, how is it going? Um, I am going to make a, a short video and um, yeah, I'm going to do it on Instagram. Just going to wait for everyone to jump on the call or at least, you know, one or two people. Um, Anyway, this is going to go up onto YouTube. I'm just I'm just recording it on um, on Instagram. But I just wanted to make a little video just to have a little conversation. Um, I read in this group today, and um, it's called uh, Awaken Travel. And someone commented, "Hi guys." Someone commented saying, "Oh, you know what's happening with this group? Why are you?" Why are you so many people using the derog derogatory term asleep? Um, that that's that's rude. It's not rude. Like we need to have this conversation. When we incarnate onto this realm, our Kundalini energy at the base of our spine is dormant. This means that we are locked in to the duality matrix the third dimensional realm, which has us all believe in the illusion of linear time, that we are not multidimensional beings. The whole point of the matrix is to hypnotize and indoctrinate everyone to not awaken to their divinity and to their multidimensionality. And so by the very, very nature, if you have not woken up to the fact that you are an innocent child of God, that that you are a multi-dimensional avatar angelic being, you're asleep. There's no way to sugarcoat that, you're asleep. That's no judgment, it means you're asleep to your divinity. You're asleep to the truth of who you are. That's not rude. That's not rude to say that. That's a, that's a gift to say that to someone. Like, wow, you know, you've, you've got a lot of waking up to do. You, you haven't woken up to the true nature of reality. You haven't woken up to the fact that we're all one and that this matrix program is, is one big massive illusion and is, is um, you know, is kept alive by, by keeping everyone in, in trapped in this asleep timeline. Like that is the whole entire purpose of the matrix is to keep everyone asleep spiritually. And not everyone does wake up because not everyone chooses to wake up. That's not derogatory. That's just calling a spade a spade. You're not going to say to someone, if someone's chosen, they've sat at the feet of Mother, Father, God, and they said, do you know what, God, I don't want to wake up this lifetime. I just want to, I just want to, like, you know, be, be hypnotised. I want to, you know, I want to be with a soulmate, have a little bit of, bit of an experience in my soul, but I don't want to wake up. That's an agreement that that, that soul is made with God. That's not a judgment. It's a fact. It's an absolute fact. So I think people need to realise that, it, you know, it, it, it's not, people don't say that as a way to, um, you know, I mean, some people might, some people might because that, that's their ego. You know, they might, they might think, oh, I'm, I'm better than that person because I'm awake. If you think that, you're not awake. <laughs> like that's the very, very definition of asleep. Anyway, if you think to yourself, oh, I'm awake and they're asleep, you are more asleep than that person. It's not, it's not a competition. It's not a, like a comparison. It's just simply an, an observation. It's either your kundalini has come out of its dormant state and it's, and it's gone into its erect state. And once the kundalini energy is erect at the base of the spine, all they can do is rush together and, and go into sacred union, which is symbolic of the, the ring, the marriage ring. The kundalini merge is symbolic of the ring of eternity. Now, once the kundalini energy has merged at the base of the spine, this is called the heros gamos. This is called the Kundalini Awakening. And you go out of duality consciousness, believing that you are separate from God, you are separate from your brothers and sisters, you are a separate um, drop of water from the mighty ocean, and, and basically all, all you must do is survive because you're not intricately part of, of the oneness. Once your Kundalini energy rises at the base of the spine and it comes together, it, it brings your consciousness into the zero point field. And the zero point field is unity consciousness. 
Now, you can only come into unity consciousness if your kundalini energy has been awakened. If your kundalini energy hasn't been awakened, you're not in unity consciousness. You're in duality consciousness. So therefore, you're in the lie. You're in the hypnosis. You're in the. You're under the spell of the of the third dimensional hypnotic um, agenda. And that's okay. You still love. God still loves you. I still love you. We all still love you. It's, but that's what's going on. Do you know what I mean? And I just think we need to have this conversation, to be honest. You know, so I, I actually had um, a couple of so-called friends fall out with me about, about that. They were like, oh, I don't even use the word asleep or sleep anyway. But they were like, oh, we just feel that, you know, you think that some people are asleep and some people are, 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 are awakened. And, and we don't see it like that. I'm sorry, but I do see it like that. You're either awake to your innocence as a child of God, to the understanding that we're all one. Everything is one. Everyone is one. You're either awakened to that or you're asleep to that. It's as simple as that. Do you know what I mean? So you can't say if you're asleep to that, you can't go, oh, that person's awake. No, no, they're not. They're not awake. They are, they're happily, they're happily asleep to their divinity. And that's fine. That doesn't make them any less of a galactic being. We're all like phenomenal galactic beings. Whether we've signed up to, um, you know, awaken in this lifetime or not, we're all phenomenal beings. I mean, just listen to a few QH, QHHT sessions. And that's like bankers, teachers, people that you would consider to be quite 3D consciousness. Once they go into their subconscious mind, they, 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 they work out they're like Syrian overlords that are like keeping the harmonics of the universe in place. I mean, we're all full on like spectacular galactic beings on, on a multidimensional level. Seriously, we all are. But not all of us sign up to awaken in, in, in this body, in this time. And that's okay. Like, that's between you and Mother, Father, God. But you can't sit there and go, oh, yeah, that person over there. I mean, you're not really going to say it. But at the end of the day, we've got to call a spade a spade. Do you know what I mean? That's what I feel anyway. And um, But it's said with love and it's not said with judgment. And it's actually said to help you. Um, like, it's my job to help people awaken you know if everyone was awake i wouldn't really have a job <laughs> so there are there are there've got to be some some asleep people that are open to you know not everyone has contracted to stay firmly asleep some people have a lot of people have some people um are contracted to be asleep up to a certain point and they they might meet a guru a teacher or they might meet a piece of art or, or even a sunset that could trigger them and trigger their kundalini awakening. Thank you, Archie Bear. Don't you dare get that. Hi, Jen. Good morning. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just wanted, just wanted to say that. Like, it, you, you can't be in denial and say everyone's, everyone's awake when they're not. And everyone hasn't, hasn't made a deal to be awake. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I never, I would never... I mean, I can't say I've never, but sometimes if you see people that you love that are really, really, really hypnotised, sometimes that, you know, there, are, there is other, other sort of language that, that maybe we might use, but I, I wouldn't advocate that, like using the word sheep and stuff like that. That's, that's rude and that's derogatory, but I do think there is a time and place even for that because just sometimes that one word might just go, wow, she would never say that to me. Like I would never, ever say it. Like if I, was, if I was to use that word, it would be very, very, very strategic and, and timed to assist that person to go, hold on a minute, that's very, very out of character for Jen. She must be really, really pissed off with me that I'm not getting this, you know. So, um, but anyway, we're all learning. We're all, we're all just navigating this unusual path. Um, yeah, is, is there any, any interaction, anything anyone would like to say? Any questions, any comments about, about the subject matter? no okay well i think that's it then guys i just wanted to make a little short message and um we've all you know always be kind always be loving like that that always be respectful but we're in a full-on spiritual war right now and it's a battle of consciousness and so we don't need to be pussyfooting around i don't think 
I think we need to be really powerful and in our hearts and in our power. Like, the deep state don't give a shit. They're just hypnotising everyone. You know, you go to the... Not that this has been reported back to me, but you, you know, um, you go to the train station, wear your mask, keep six feet apart. It's like hypnosis, 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 you know? And it's like... If, if they're going to being be so relentless in their programming, we also have a duty to be to be truthful and to be exposing um, stuff that that we see. You know, at the end of the day, feeling a disconnect with Earth family. I'm so emotional and questioning my purpose. Feeling a disconnect. I think with our with our families. I mean, this is across the board. Whether you come from a hippie family, a straight family, whatever. There's you know, there, there are there are splits happening within families. And I just feel like we have to let go. You can't control that. I can't control who wants to take a vaccine in my family. And, you know, I can't. I can't control if they've, if they've bought into the narrative. If they have, I just, I stay away from them, you know, because my my sort of like protection is is and spiritual protection and boundaries are very very important and i don't want to be around toxic hypnotized people that are going to try to force me to wear a mask <laughs> do you know what i mean i'm not going to be around them so this split is occurring in all families in my family as well my stepdad is completely mask crazy i hadn't seen my mum for like nearly a whole year and we went around there and he really kicked off at me to, to wear a mask and i told him to stick his mask where the sun don't shine but that was massive friction for me and my family you know me and my mum because he's a total covid um i don't know what you call it he, he, he's just totally totally bought into the fear as are millions and millions of older people. So I think that we also have a duty to just to not be going like, all right, all right, just be, just be asleep, be asleep. We do also have a duty to, you know, where it's appropriate, bring, bring up this awakening conversation. Um, yeah, experiencing the same. Yeah. So anyway, it was just a short message. I just wanted to just to leave for everyone and um, don't feel bad, you know. Don't 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 feel like I don't know if you if, if you if you observe that some people are, are asleep like good on you like they are asleep do you know what I mean if people are like all believe that the government are you know want what's best for us and pharmaceutical companies just just want to heal us like good on you for exposing that and 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 and, and breaking that hypnotic spell do you know what I mean so um, yeah we are in a spiritual war and i never thought i'd ever say those words because i'm totally in in oneness in 5d unity consciousness and there's no war taking place on that in that dimensional realm the spiritual war is taking place in the 4d and the 3d but there is a spiritual battle going on for the earth do you know what i mean and i'm not going to be in denial about that even though i'm i feel like in many ways my vibration has transcended that um that sort of like that pull you know and and i speak about that a lot in my work you know like i've been so deeply protected all, all the time like since i had my spiritual awakening when i was 21 i've been so so deeply protected on all levels in all ways on all platforms on in everything and i think that the reason why that is is because i've, I've adjusted my vibration to, to break through that fourth dimensional barrier into 5d and once you're stabilized in 5d the lower energies can't touch you they can throw shit at you but they it can't stick do you know what i mean it just and i, I believe i've had a lot of like you know shit thrown at me but it just hasn't hasn't registered it hasn't stuck um, so the whole point is you want to just keep raising your vibration and, and you want your vibration to stabilise in, in, in 5D. So the question is, how do we stabilise our vibration in 5D? Well, you commit to a spiritual practice. You, you, you take the reins over your egoic consciousness. You, you realise that unless you have a spiritual practice, your ego monkey mind is going to be running the show. And the monkey mind is totally addicted to separation and duality. And so in order to come into 5D, you need to commit to a spiritual practice. Read my books. I talk about all the spiritual practices in there. So um, you, you, there are many, many different types of, of, of spiritual practices that you can commit to. But uh, unless you take control over your consciousness, the matrix will. It's a choice. And most people, because we're God's children, we're all such good souls. Essentially, in our core, we're such 
we're, we're good girls and we're good boys. We don't want to, we just want to be good and we want to do good. And so if our authorities, authorities tell us anything, we'll just like be, yeah, yeah. Because we, we believe that you, you love us and you care about us. Why would we question that? So this is a huge, this, so, so the deep state is taking advantage of our beautiful, beautiful, kind, angelic nature. Because we're children of God. You know what I mean? So there, there is there is a battle of consciousness going on um, within the lower sort of like below the fourth, you know, 4D and below. And to say there isn't is just being completely in denial. And even though I'm in fifth dimensional consciousness, I'm still completely and utterly aware of that battleground. And um, and I hope that you take this, you know, an inspiration to adjust your frequency to go move through 4D. You know, and I've, I speak about that a lot as well. It's like with our with our fifth dimensional self, like it's like the three D self is the caterpillar, and the five D self is the butterfly. Now, the butterfly is always there. So, if you're a caterpillar, if you're in three D consciousness, your caterpillar, your your butterfly self is always always activated within the holographic reality. And what happens is when we're in when we haven't quite stabilized in five D. We, we, we have moments where we align with our butterfly self, our 5D self, and then we slip out of it. And then, and then a big massive wave comes along, or someone says something to us and it hurts our feelings, and then we come out, we slip out of that vibration, you see. But at some point, there will be a moment where you flip where, where the caterpillar literally flips and there's no longer a, 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 and becomes one with that holographic butterfly self. Whereas until that moment of flipping, of stabilizing, there's always going to be your consciousness is going to be tuning in and tuning out, tuning in and tuning out. And most people that are working with me are having that experience. They are having experiences of being in fifth dimensional consciousness, but it's not stabilized. So the aim of the game is to stabilize and come into unity consciousness and work with all the tools. Like every, my whole life is devoted to sharing tools to help everyone stabilize in fifth dimensional consciousness. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but but the, the, the main thing is, is that most people are lazy. Like we're, we're very, very lazy creatures on the whole. And most people don't want to do the work to stabilize. Most people think that it's just like a one hit wonder that you, 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 you you're going to, you know, and, and there will be a point where you are totally stable, but then you have to maintain that stability as well. If you completely and utterly stabilize, but then start um, going into negative thoughts and surrounding yourself with very, very toxic people that are really hypnotized and programmed, that can even bring you out of your stabilization. So even when you're stabilized, you need to maintain that. So you may need to maintain that by being still committed to your spiritual practice you won't need it as much as you needed to, in order to stabilize but you've still got to stay committed to your spiritual practice you've got to really really truly embody what it means to to love yourself and really to love ourselves means to have boundaries to not allow toxic energy toxic programmed people to inf infiltrate our peace infiltrate our 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 self you know what i mean so um that's how we maintain that level um, but it's very hard. Once you've stabilised, it is very, very difficult. You have to really work at it to, to, to come out of that alignment. But you can, because I think that happened to me. I think after when I had my spiritual awakening when I was 21, I stabilised in fifth dimensional consciousness. And I, I was there for a really, really, really long time. But I started hanging out with the wrong group of people. I started hanging out with fake spiritual people that looked like they were, you know, kind of like really, really deeply spiritual, but they weren't. They were spiritual ego. But I didn't realise that because I was in angelic consciousness. I just projected everyone was in angelic consciousness, especially if you looked like me, dressed like me and had a similar lifestyle to me. I just projected you're in angelic consciousness, you're in angelic consciousness. But these people were not in angelic consciousness. They were in very much ego spiritual glamour um toxic energy and so what happened was even though i'd stabilized in 5d because i was around that energy it brought me down it, it because i i um i just went along with the with the group mentality that the, the group thinking because i just assumed that they they were on the same page as me and then i then i woke up and i was like oh my god they're the most toxic group of like deluded ego obsessed people that i've ever met in my life and as soon as i realized that i cut off from them them. And, and and then I fully, fully committed.
committed to a spiritual practice because even though I was stable in 5D, I actually didn't have a spiritual practice. But that goes to show you how much of a humdinger my awakening was. It was like when I had my awakening when I was 21, I literally like drank a whole bottle of God. <laughs> Most people sign up for a shot glass. Most people sign up for a spoon of God. Some people sign up for a shot glass. I signed up for the whole entire bottle of God consciousness. And that kept, kept me at an extraordinary elevated state for many, many, many years. But I actually fell out of my alignment um, after about maybe 10 or 12 years. And that was due to the company that I was keeping. And the fact that I was allowing um, my negative thoughts to, 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 to take reign in my consciousness. So I'm just sharing my journey in the hope that it will bring some understanding and clarity to you and where you're at. Um, so, so, then, so then after my spiritual awakening, I came out of 5D. I still obviously had the, the butterfly holograph was, holograph was there. But then I, I, I let go of that group. I realised what an absolute nightmare that group of people was. I cut them all out of my life and I, and I realised I had to go on to be, like, onto the path of being a lone wolf. And I just accepted that. And, um, and then I, I then found an amazing spiritual practice, which is a 6,000 year old Buddhist um, practice, which I talk about in my book. I have to read my book to get the spiritual practices. So anyway, once I'd committed to that spiritual practice, because I was at a very, very high level anyway, um, basically it didn't take long because I'd let go of that group. I was like a free wolf. I wasn't, I didn't have all the bullshit programming to, to sort of like uh, influence me unconsciously. It, it didn't take long then. After, my, after I committed to my spiritual practice, which was in January 2012, I then experienced the full-on ascension of my consciousness in um, October 2013. And that was triggered by um, the identity of my true twin flame being revealed to me on the inner planes of consciousness. And then once that happened and I saw his face, it was like his face was like the key that unlocked my DNA in order to um, just lift me, lift me one million million percent out of any kind of like strangles of connection to duality consciousness. Somehow this energy of this sacred union, this internal marriage just lifted me up and, and, and then boom, then I just stabilised. I totally, totally stabilised in fifth dimensional consciousness. And I was still committed to my practices. Can't not commit to your practices once you've stabilised. But once you're stable, you, you, you realise that you're stable because you do not give a flying SHIT about what anyone thinks about you. That's one of the main ways that you know you've stabilised. That's like the litmus test that you are not bothered. People can judge you all day, every day till the cows come home and it's just like water off a duck's back, water off a duck's back. There is like zero bothered. That's, that's one way how you know. Another way is that if something very, very traumatic happens to you, um, so the way I see being stable in 5D is like being a surfer. So, so it means that you've really, really mastered staying on your surfboard you know so like if you're stable in 5d right if a massive massive wave comes like something really huge something really really traumatic you're basically going to ride the wave you're going to stay on your board you're going to stay in your alignment you're not going to panic you're not going to have any anxiety you're just going to be able to work with any tools that you need to be able to ride that wave if you're not stable in 5d that wave is going to throw you all over the shop and you're going to experience being um, being dra like drowning. Um, how else do we know that we've stabilised? There's no lack. Lack is gone from your consciousness. There's no victim. You never, ever, ever for one second identify as being a victim. Um, you... I mean, this is, this is a really, really key point that... You know, because so much of when we're not stabilised is our addiction to, to being a victim. And then coming into that place of the zero point field 
it's like you, you, you're home, you're home. And all day, every day, you get this deep, deep knowing, I'm home, I'm home. You, it's like you've arrived in the zero point field, but it's not like your journey's over. It's like there's just an expansion, a greater and greater level of expansion into um, into God consciousness. So when you go when you go to five D, when you stabilize at five D, it doesn't stop at five D. Your consciousness just keeps on growing and it keeps on expanding with more codes, with more love, with more permission slips, with more insights, with more gnosis. It's just a constant expansion. So so being awake isn't a static place where you're stuck. It's just like you've arrived home in the zero point field. And so a hallmark of not being stabilized is that you're always searching for your twin flame. You're always thinking that something outside of yourself is, is, is what you, you're searching for. Whereas when you're stabilized, you know there is nothing, there is absolutely nothing outside of yourself that can bring you the satiety that your soul seeks. Your, the, the, the satiety that your soul seeks is is accessed within the present moment. It's not accessed via a relationship or or things going right or getting a job. It, what you're searching for is your alignment with the present moment. What you're searching for is to be a child again, just totally, totally empty and free and alive in the present moment. That is what we're all searching for. So, so a massive hallmark of being stabilised in 5D is that there's no more searching. Like, you, you, all you want to do is give. You can observe that in me. Like, all I want to do is give. All I want to do is serve. Whether you're in my life, whether it's virtual, whatever, I am just in that place where my cup, no matter what's going on in my life, I'm in that cup, in that vibrational place where everything is just pouring from me. But it's not... It's all effortless. Do you know what I mean? But I, you know, I'm just going to read these comments. Do you think the bad company were energy vampires? Yeah, definitely. I think the bad company was... I think that I had a genuine spiritual awakening, which is very, very rare. And I feel like I accessed those codes of of true one who is truly truly spiritually awakened and i think that that group kind of um unconsciously not consciously but were using me as like i felt like a bit of a mascot like an emblem within that group to say oh we've got one very very highly awakened person therefore therefore all of this group is awake somehow but but they were complete hedonists they were complete party obsessed druggies do you know what i mean but the fact that i was there i feel like it brought some sort of kudos on a spiritual level and so it, it was just it was just wrong dark toxic relationships that truly truly my life began like when i when i let go of that group you know and that and that's all the people in glastonbury so much fake spirituality there it's it's, it's just it's toe curling it really really is um so yeah that's it any other comments amen to that anyway yeah it's quite a good little little spiel i've um shared with you all brothers and sisters um yeah and i'll talk more about this on the 4-4 transmission i'm really really looking forward to the 4-4 transmission because it's going to be a much more sacred a much more intimate event and there's going to be an opportunity to actually ask questions at the end which is going to be for the first one and i'm going to open up my my mighty membership and let you all know about that soon but um so the 4-4 is going to take place on Zoom. I'll post the link to book onto the 4-4. I'm going to share more about this, more about fifth dimensional consciousness, more, more, more tips on, you know, how you, how you stabilise, etc. Between authentic spiritual people and the fake ones. How, so someone's just asked, how can you tell the difference between authentic spiritual people and fake ones? Authentic people will make you feel amazing when you're in their presence, whether that's online or, 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 or meeting them in person. You, you will come away just feeling like so high and so uplifted. Whereas a fake spiritual person, you will feel like an energy vampire has sucked the living life out of you. And you'll feel quite depleted and have to do a little, little bit of like tapping or a little bit of work on yourself to bring yourself back. That's how you know mainly. Um, 
what else was I going to say? I don't think I've got any other announcements. Um, I'm, I'm going to be working on the hard copy of my book, which I'm really, really excited about, brothers and sisters. It's going to have like all my light codes in there, Pleiadian light codes. That's going to be amazing. Um, I'm also working on getting the workbook printed into a, into a physical workbook at the moment. To be honest with you, the whole grief thing has really, really thrown me back. And I, I was meant to have a lot more things sorted out, but I've just been, you know, some days I'll just have a memory and it'll be like the whole day's gone because I'm just really upset and just, just not in a place where I want, want to, you know, work. I'm just thinking about him and so yeah it's throwing me back a little bit the grief but that's okay I'm still I'm still carrying on I'm still showing up and I absolutely love my work it's it's beautiful it's my bliss um what are, any other announcements hope you all check out my brand new website it's absolutely beautiful my friend Molly did that and uh, she's done an amazing job on that website it's so beautiful it's taken ages for us to do it so I hope you do hope you have a look at the website um and the book's going amazingly um yeah book's going absolutely amazingly sold loads of copies gonna have a meeting with a publicist in america uh doing loads of exciting press stuff with it um so yeah let's try and uh, get like break all records with the four four brothers and sisters and we'll try and get as many people as there as possible so uh anyway i think this message is done uh is there any other comments that you'd like to say Thank you for this. Sorry for what you're going through. Holy goodness, needed to hear that. How do we prepare for 4-4? Four, four? Just, just keep on doing everything you can to raise your vibration. I might make a little reel now to say top ways to raise your vibration. And also on Instagram, can you like share my videos? Because there's a little arrow button. You can share this video and it can go into your stories. And um, I'll, I'm going to send uh, anyone that shares this video, I'm going to pick a winner and I'm going to send you my workbook valued at £33 and valued at bloody infinity of value. Um, in fact, I might actually just read, I was guided to uh, read a little bit from my workbook. Am I going to be able to pull it up? Let's see. See if I can pull up my workbook. I don't know if I can. How can you, if you've got any comments or um, anything you'd like to share. I can't find it. Is it possible for a twin flame to be a narcissist? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, my twin flame used to be very, very narcissistic, but he's, he's, he's grown out of that so I think you can be a narcissist but you can't stay a narcissist and if you stay stuck to being a narcissist then you're not in the vibration to be a twin flame it's the complete antithesis of, of, of being, in a, being a twin flame um, yeah let me see if I can just find this workbook for you guys and I'm just gonna I'm gonna read you all a um, let me, um, I'm just going to read you all an extract from the workbook. I just feel guided to do that for some reason. If I can find it. Oh, here we go. Workbook. Let's find, an, let's find a, an exciting chapter. Okay, here we go. Chapter four, The Power of Gratitude. Gratitude is vitamin for the soul, Emmanuel Daghur. I cannot think of a more potent way to continue this workbook other than sharing the chapter on the power, the importance and the significance of gratitude on our spiritual path. As mentioned over and over in my book, Twin Flames and the Event, in order for us to obtain the levels of happiness and alignment that we are all deeply seeking, we must commit to a spiritual practice that enables us to guide and steer our consciousness towards that which is positive and uplifting. If we do not have a spiritual practice, we will be swept along by the egoic consciousness, the egoic narrative, which is eternally committed to the false idea that you are separate, you have been abandoned, and you do not belong in the universe. Therefore, it is so important that we diligently commit for the rest of our lives to becoming obsessed 
with gratitude and subsequently going on rampages of gratitude. Whenever we remember our day, may we all remember to reel off all the things that we are grateful for. This one spiritual act will shift your vibration. And if you commit diligently to this practice, everyone around you will notice that your vibration has shifted. When we commit to a spiritual practice of gratitude, we align our vibratory frequency with the benevolent force of creation. We quickly, we quickly realise that all nature exists on a particular frequency band and it is our duty as individualised transmitters of frequencies to adjust our vibration in order to align with the benevolent force of creation, the sacred force that keeps all the stars in their place and turns a sperm and an egg into a baby. So what I realised on, you know, a few years ago was that we, we're all like radio transmitters and we have a duty to adjust our frequency to uh, to that which is positive and uplifting. So again, we're back to that conversation where the matrix is always trying to hijack our consciousness. And so if you don't take, take the reins of your consciousness, the matrix will, and it will steer you towards separation and duality. And so what, you, what, what I came to realise was that there is a vibration in the universe that keeps the stars in their place, that turns a seed into a flower, that turns a sperm and an egg into a baby. There, there is a vibration, there is a force in existence that, that, that does that. And it is our duty to uh, attune to, to that, that force of creation. It's like what I realised is that you know, creation is an extraordinarily blissful frequency and all of creation is in bliss. All of nature is in bliss unless man has got involved. But all of nature is in bliss. A, a, a flower is in bliss. The ocean's in bliss. The trees are in bliss. The birds are in bliss. Like that is the vibration of creation is, is godly and blissful. And so it is our duty to adjust our individualised radio transmitter consciousness to come into alignment with that benevolent force of creation. That's our job. Not only must we become empty and free of our story and show up empty, we must also take responsibility to adjust our transmitter frequency to, to, to align with the force of creation that keeps all the stars in their place. And we do that by going on rampages of gratitude, by being obsessed with gratitude, by, by positive affirmations, by being really, really real. Not, it's never, ever being fake. It's, um, it's always about being real and authentic and truly, truly loving yourself. Anyway, that, I think I've given you enough top tips. Um, I'll post this on YouTube. I mean, I've got seven people. This is ridiculous. This is such a high level content. There's like, you know, it, it, it's crazy in Instagram. Why have I only got six people? People talk absolute nonsense on this platform and they get 47 million people. And I'm chatting about the real, real truth that will uncode, that will unlock the codes for you to totally come into enlightenment. And I have eight people watching. It's mad, isn't it? So share this video, guys. You know, I don't have Facebook on my phone. I, I only have Instagram on my phone. I'm not really on Facebook that much. Um, so yeah, tag me. Let people know. Like, this is this is substance. This is a sort of conversation of substance. So it's not me just prancing around going, oh, oh look. Oh, beautiful. Oh, God. Look at me. It's beautiful. Yes. It's not that. Do you know what I mean? It's like I'm actually just trying to serve you with soul food, you know. So anyway, thank you to the seven people that, that have that have watched this. I'm sure that you've been um, uplifted from this conversation, uh, but no worries. Uh, I'm going to upload it onto YouTube. So um, God bless us all, and um, I'm going to still I'm going to carry on chipping away at, at, at Instagram. I'm sure I'm sure I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to get myself some sort of decent following on there. Anyway, God bless you all. Namaste.